this. <laughs> so the next one I worked on was this. I saw this lovely fox Mando and was inspired to put her in the woods. So maybe she's on indoor doing some business? I don't know. But I found some <laughs> public domain material of some woods that really I feel like match the weapon that she's holding. The staff spear thing. And then I obviously like the original photo is very cool. Green, blue, gray, right? So I had to start getting it to the colors that are warm. And I feel like I got that. I achieved that here. And so to my little idea to save these and show you how I adjusted this was to merge them, drop that layer over into another, like, you know, drag drop into another file over here that's open and then come back, undo my work, and then bring it back. So you can, so you can see both. You can see the before and after of the background now. I figured out how to do it real quick. So here's the finished product of the background. A little more work to the background. I like that. I think it just makes the woods look a little more dreamy. Oh, and here we got our subject. Now, I didn't save every single layer for this, but same rules as before. I did the neural filter, adjusted her to the background, did a couple of different layers. Not sure why I merged them to this, but here we are. And I put in some fog, but the fog is a little too white. So I had to color correct it to the rest of the background. Did that by just dropping a simple layer of, like I selected, use the paint bucket tool, bring up a new layer, clipped it to that so it doesn't affect the overall background. And then just selected where it looks kind of foggy back here, drop that color in, there it is. Oh, and I put it like I, you know, meshed it in with one of these overlay layers. It's simple. And then the rest are just light effects. And then, oh yeah, here's where I painted over her a little bit, really brought her color up. I don't know, just have to, but <laughs> I have to paint. I feel like I'm making art, right? Doing something by hand. And then I kicked her back over to Lightroom. Was she not the next one I did? Yes, she was the next one. Okay, there she is. So we went from that to that. Pretty cool. She's in a forest. I mean, not bad for being outside, <laughs> not in the studio. We were using noon lighting. That's the sun. There's my light. Eh. <laughs> you know, we're working with what we got. But it still looks pretty damn dope. It's okay. And then the next one that we worked on, let's see if I can, eh. there we go. The next one that I did was this one. Don't need to save that now. You've seen it. I don't save my PSD files because they're massive. They end up being four or five gigs and I don't need that in my life or on my computer. So <laughs> I just save the finished product and that's enough for me. I feel like I'm not gonna go back and change it. So, ah, uh, yeah, here's a public domain picture. I didn't even bother taking the lady out. I was like, meh, I'll just block her. <laughs> Put a little blur on it, started changing the color. Oop. Really started adjusting that. Threw more, more over it. There's the finished background. And then boom, subject. <laughs> Don't even have to worry about that lady back there. Now yeah, now you can see how I blended them in. So I took this original subject you end up having like four or five layers of thing of the same thing here. But the original has the, obviously the original lighting doesn't quite mesh in with the background that I've made for it. So I copied that, boom, there's layer 20 copy, neural filter, meshed it in with the background, and then made another copy, layer 20 copy two, I guess, put it in overlay, change the opacity and the fill a little bit because I'm picky. See, it changes it just ever so. And there's another copy. <laughs> I can take a copy of any of these solid ones, uh, like the first one here. I took another copy. So yeah, to layer 20, copy three, and just painted it black. Just select it, 
make an overall selection like that and paint it black and then go in and blur it to like what did I have it set at? Uh, it's not telling me, but it was like 170 or something. Put your blur up to 170. And then that's your shadow that you can play with. They're outside and not like up against a portrait backdrop, so I'm not making my shadow crazy. But this is something that I do whenever, um, for example, in like everyday photography that you might do. Uh, think, 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 think recently. Oh, yeah. I had a family for Christmas, the holidays were around recently, right? And I had this one family who wanted to do like a high fashion photo shoot kind of a feel for Christmas. They didn't want like Christmas background. They didn't want trees or lights or any of that. They just wanted like solid white, make it look like we're having a high fashion photo shoot, but like really, they were really nicely dressed. And I was like, okay, that sounds like cool. That's cool. That's what you want your Christmas cards to be. I'm down for whatever. And I didn't have a backdrop because I haven't re-upped on my last backdrop roll. I usually use big, big paper rolls that go on for many, many feet. Um, but I ran out last year and I never re-upped because I just don't use them that much. But uh, this woman just really wanted this. So I was like, okay, you get whatever backdrop you can because I can't get mine in time. I have to get it from like a retailer, like a wholesaler. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this was like a week before the shoot. You know, I didn't have time to order one. But she got some little some little thing off of Timu, Timu, whatever, uh, a thing that I won't shop on, <laughs> but she's like, oh, it said it was bigger, and it looked like a nice background, but what I was working with was, like, this very thin sheet that you could see right through, and was only, like, it didn't even touch the floor. It wasn't even a whole backdrop, so I had to do some crafty editing, <laughs> and one of the things I did to put their shadows back in after I whitened out their background completely was this little trick of selecting the subject, copying the layer, and then blurring out a black version of that layer to create a shadow that I can then move into any direction I want and make it look like they're there on that background. So that's a handy little thing, handy little trick. So that's, oh, I must have added fog too, and then changed the color of the fog. And I guess that's where I left it and then I must have kicked it back over to Photoshop, ran it through a couple of presets, and there she is. Different vibe from the from the first one, but still, you know, I don't know, I believe that she's in a forest, getting ready to fight, sure. Looks like there's already been a battle, the tree was knocked down, who knows. <clears throat> so, the very next one. This is going to be a quick stream, I'm like, popping right through 